Hey everyone, my name is Zach. I'm a 22 year old competitive boulderer from Canada, currently living near Frankfurt, Germany. Welcome back to the Conclime training series where I record all of my training, provide in-depth analysis of every session, and just chat about climbing with an emphasis on competition. If you enjoy the series, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a ton. In today's episode, we're continuing yesterday's episode. Um, yesterday was session one of this day of training and today this episode is session two. Uh, we had an hour, it was a, it was an hour session in the morning yesterday, which I ended up going a bit overtime when I was trying that blue bowler because it was, it was like kind of low energy and I was really like getting into the heat of that. My body was learning the movements and I didn't want to save it for next session. I really wanted to focus in while I had the fresh in my mind. So I ended up going like 15 minutes overtime. And so this session here is another hour of bouldering and I was going to try and keep it to just an hour because I already went overtime in the first session. And we have a very uh, clear goal. I mean, at this point, we had a very clear goal in the session, which was to finish off all the bowlers in the gym. And I made a, I put a big dent in that goal in the morning session and it felt like really, really, really realistic after that session. So I was super motivated going into this day of training. And as you can tell by the title, um, by the end of the video, I, I was I managed to complete all the all the boulders, so it was it was a lot of fun. I haven't I've never sent all the boulders in this gym, so that was a, a nice goal to tick off. I still haven't done it in in the other location of Studio Block Darmstadt uh, yet, so that's like next up. I think we still have we just have two sevens left in that gym, so you know, assuming that they don't set any more boulders that stump me, we're just two boulders away from conquering both Studio Blocks, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, we're continuing uh, our day of training. We were, so we were trying this boulder yesterday in yesterday's episode in our morning session. And I was getting stumped by this jump across in the middle here where we're going, we're jumping to this volume that's like pretty slopey and we're trying to flip uh, a thumb catch that we're pinching on the start hold uh, to like a side bolt so we can compress these volumes. But this uh, side pull is really bad and it, it's like abnormally bad and it doesn't fit like the rest, like the difficulty of the rest of the bowler and even like the difficulty of the other sevens in the gym. And so I started to think that I was doing something wrong. Like I didn't, this didn't feel like, like the right method because the difficulty just felt, uh, it felt too hard. It didn't, it didn't match with everything else. And so I suspected something was up. And so you can see, I start trying something else. And I, I kind of realized, like I look at it, I go and I stand at the start holes and I look at the, where we're going. And I realized that the, the, the kind of uh, edge that's added to the right side of this volume, it's like, it's like a pretty good edge, but it's like dual tech side up. So it's, it's kind of hard to hold, but it's quite positive. Um, it's, it's actually closer than I thought and it's within jumping distance. So you see, I switch up my beta and switch up my beta. And in a few tries, I'm able to just like stick this big dyno over to like the good hold instead of trying to do this sequence where I hit the slowly part of the volume and flip this hand. And it makes a lot more sense. In hindsight, now I'm looking back at it, it actually looks like this intended sequence might be something like you have your start holes and then you paddle off the slopey part and then you go double to the good uh, hold. That makes a lot more sense uh, now that I'm looking at it now. But for some reason, I could not come up with that sequence when uh, when I was trying this boulder. But yeah, we managed to get a center of that and that was really relieving. That was like the boulder that I was most worried about before the session started. Um, like I knew that that boulder was probably gonna keep me from doing everything in the gym, if, if any of them. So once that boulder went down, I was pretty confident. At this point, I think we have like two sevens left. And this is one of them. This is the a new set in the gym. Uh, usually, this, so this is like their big cave. And then usually, usually when they set the section, they set like super long boulders and they kind of put up some power endurance boulders uh, for the people that are into that. I'm not one of them. <laughs> but luck, So I don't usually climb in this uh, cave. Luckily though, the seven that they put up actually wasn't that long. It didn't go too deep into the cave. So uh, I was able to try it. And uh, yeah, it's like super physical boulder, my style. I kind of, like this sequence at the beginning was really weird. I don't know if I did something wrong. You see, I kind of went downwards a bit. Uh, it was pretty funky, but I managed to kind of power my way through that sequence and uh, finish the boulder. Super my style. And yeah, it was, it was a lucky flash. I was feeling really strong uh, throughout this whole day of training as well. So that was, that boulder was just made for me. And if I was gonna get stumped by, any bulls in the session, it wasn't going to be for lack of strength. It was going to be for just lack of root reading or, uh, yeah, like technical climbing. Uh, so that was, that was a good feeling. I haven't felt like this in a while. Um, it's taken a while for me to feel like feel super confident about my, about my shape and my like climbing intuition and my strength. And uh, so it's a good feeling. And we still got a ways to go too. This is not the strongest I've ever been. Like we got, we still got some work to do, but I'm, I finally am like, uh, happy to like showcase 
like some some really good climbing by me. I think there's going to be like already we've had some really good sessions recently, and there's just going to be some uh, even better ones coming up. But anyway, we're trying this boulder here now. This is a six, and if you remember uh, the first video that came out of like kind of the German series of the of this comp climb series, just like like our first day of training here in Germany, uh, we were trying this boulder. It was one of the first boulders we got on. I'd had like a couple of warm up sessions uh, before like that episode, of course. Like that wasn't just my first day back after not climbing for a month, but uh, still it was like a, like a weak feeling day of training. And so I, I kind of just moved on from the six on that day. Cause I was like, okay, I'm just clearly, I'm not in shape enough to do this. And so I was interested to go, like it was, I guess it was like the newest set back then. And so it kind of stayed up and circulated all the way up until now. So I actually got the opportunity to try it again, which is fun. I wasn't expecting to be able to try this builder again. So I was interested to see if, uh, if I was just like super weak on that day, which I mean, I think I was, or if the boulder uh, was was just hard. And it turns out that it was actually just hard as well. Like this was just a really hard six. This move in the middle here to the flat hold was really hard. And when we were working it on that day, I was kind of doing what I gave a few tries to at the beginning of, of this uh, little session on this boulder today, where I was trying to just kind of hold these two holds, which feels possible. It's just, uh, I think like I, I was kind of hot in the gym. I was, had some greasy tips. And so I didn't feel like sticky enough to do that. But I think it could go like that. But then you see here, like what I realized was an easier way to do this boulder was just to jump two hands to the flat hold. You had to kind of like stay low. And then once you hit the slope and you're low, it, it, it's easier to hold it with two hands. And it was, you can see it took me like, it was really hard to control that swing. Like it was really precarious bounce position on that sloper, which is uh, kind of like my anti style, like I've mentioned before, just kind of being able to position my body correctly on like really bad slopers like that. So that was a good one to work on. And yeah, I think like that, that's, I'm not, when I say that six was quite hard, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's misgraded or it's a seven. I think that one was just super anti-style for me and that's why I struggled with it. It was just a, a proper six that uh, was a style that I needed to work on. So it was good to put some practice on that and get revenge on that boulder after we couldn't do it a few weeks ago. And now we're moving on to this climb. As you can see, it's got a very cool first move here. Uh, it's a seven. And actually, I'd, I'd seen a video of one of the setters doing this on Instagram, so I knew the sequence, they were, the sequence that they were going for, but I actually didn't end up doing it. It uh, felt really weird, and so I just, instead of uh, trying what I had seen uh, in it, like on social media first, I kind of just let my body think, like what would I try without having seen anything? Um, that's what I try to do anytime, like just with the nature of social media and like seeing other people try things, or especially like if I go to the gym on a rest day and watch Fanny do something, like I'll, I'll, you know, get beta beforehand, but I always make sure to kind of be aware of it and make sure that I try what I think I would have tried initially first. And so I came up with this uh, method where, oh, and so the, the setter sequence was, they actually start with their right foot on the volume and then hand here, and then they go and they cross their left foot through to the next triangle, catch the hand and then do a right hook on the wall. It looked really cool. And I was kind of hoping that I had to do that. But unfortunately I was able to kind of like this hold was good enough where I could just land on the volume and kind of almost down pull on this pocket. It wasn't a jug, but it was like pretty positive edge. Um, but yeah, I was able to kind of just do it with this different method. And then this ending is also pretty tricky as well. Oh, and, and the reason I try to like, you know, uh, do what my body would want to initially is, is because it's, it's important when you're doing like scramble competitions um, like when you can watch your competitors try boulders, um, to not just do what you see. Like sometimes people will do the incorrect beta and they can screw you over with their bad beta. But as soon as somebody does something, a lot of competitors will kind of, you know, simultaneously all agree that, okay, that's the method let's all go try that. And then nobody's, everybody's afraid to break the mold and go try something else, which, you know, I've struggled with a lot, but I feel like I've been getting better at it. Um, and so I, I like, I'll always like, I'll try not to be afraid to be the first person to do a different beta or like break the mold in a scramble event. And this is how I practice it in training. When I see people do boulders on social media or I see Maddie does something or, you know, a training partner, I will try to do what I, what I would try, you know, without having seen anything first. And in this case, here's an example of it working out. Like that beta was probably a higher percentage than trying to like swing the foot through, catch the hold and do a toe hook. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then the last move was cool too. That was a pocket I was going to on the finish. So I had to like be super precise and for that hand flip, really quality boulder. I'm not going to stop talking about how amazing the setters are. They deserve to hear it. And, uh, then you can see here, we do the six, uh, cool move. 
with a very precarious finish match, that volume. Uh, this is That was kind of a generous angle that we were looking at it from. But if I, there was like a straight on angle that I wanted to get. You could see just how slippery that was. And the finish was really bad. You had to just kind of match it and not like breathe at all. Um, but yeah, that was cool. And, and so at this point, we had finished all the sevens. And I was just kind of touring around looking at the tricky sixes that I wanted to finish off. And uh, this here is ends up being the last boulder session, the last six on the comp ball that I had to do. And just like that, we did all the boulders at Studebock Mannheim. I'm feeling like super psyched about my shape and we're just, go there's, we're only going up from here to like, I'm not even, I'm not quite peaking yet. And we have, uh, you know, we got like a kind of a fun event coming up, the Jackalope in Montreal and in like a couple weeks, a few weeks. So if I'm feeling this good now, hopefully like, you know, I'll just be like feeling super strong and it will be fun to do an event while I'm feeling super strong as well. Even if it's not like that important of an event. So it's just fun to compete while you're feeling super good. So that should be fun. And then, yeah, we got the rest day tomorrow and then it's back to it for these next few weeks of training until we go to Canada to visit home again. Tune in.